Hello YouTube! Welcome to the second episode of my Digital Aquarium Controller Series. Today we're going to look at my first prototype controller. This is a simple LED light, fader, timer, and driver for a small fixture. For this prototype, I took it down to basics. There's no breakout boards here. This was made with all discrete components on strip board. The LED drivers are made based on LED Artist's simple buck LED driver off Instructables. The link's in the description, check it out. Times maintained using a DS1307 real-time clock. This is all managed by a standalone ATmega 328IC with an Adreno bootloader. To program it, I gotta swap the chip in and out of my old Adreno Demonava prototyping board. Power comes from a 12 volt 2 amp wall adapter. This is regulated down to 5 volts for the ATmega 328 with an LM7805. Some strip board LEDs, buttons, and supporting components are used. For the light itself, I drilled mounting holes into an old processor heat sink and mounted the LED chips to it. Then I cut a hole in the bottom of the metal bowl and used that as a reflector. I mounted the heat sink and the fan to this. I use a few feet of Cat5 for the cable. I solder two wires to the blue LEDs, two to the white and two for the fan. A bit of picture hanging wire is used to suspend the fixture. The electronics are housed in a custom acrylic box. I should get into the details for building one of these in a future video. Unfortunately, I don't have a circuit diagram to share with you, but this is very basic. The AT Mega 328 works as a basic Adreno. Pins 2 and 3 connect to buttons and then through small resistors to 5 volts. Pins 5 and 6 go to the PWM control channels on the buck regulators for the lights. These also each drive a single transistor amplifier which powers indicator LEDs for each channel. Pins A4 and A5 are connected to the real-time clock and finally pin 4 goes to the base of a power transistor to drive the 12 volt fan. Now a quick look at the code that powers the system. I'll share the code for your use and improvement in the description. I use the wire library to manage the RTC. After I define pin definitions, I set some constants. This is an array to establish the different fade levels. I found these levels through experimentation. The apparent brightness is not linear, so I chose eight steps that I had a visible change to define them here. Then I define constants for the times that I wish the lights to begin fading on or off. We init some variables to track this light status. A few functions for binary to decimal conversion. Here's the default function to set the time on the DS1307 RTC. The default function to retrieve the time from the RTC. Now some guts. This function checks the time and then triggers events. The time track array is updated with the current time. First we check to see if we are in a different second than the last one recorded. If so, it then checks to see if it is a new minute. If so, it checks to see if this hour or minute matches the time specified to turn the lights on or off. If a change is needed, it updates the phase variable to indicate that the lights should be on or off. The minute counter variable is just used to count out five minutes. So every five minutes, it triggers the fade LED routine. Then at the end, we update the time track array. The fade LEDs function figures out how bright the light should be and outputs that level. Remember, this is triggered every five minutes. It tracks the lights through four phases. Zero is fade down, three is off, one is fade up, and two is on. So for example, if the lights are off but the blue phase is set to one by the time track function, this function will increase the brightness level every five minutes until it gets to the last step, and then it'll mark the light as fully on. The fan control function is simple. If both lights are off, turn off the fan. Otherwise, turn on the fan. Basic button routine. It checks both buttons on the front panel. If pressed, it reads a high state, and if the corresponding light is on, it turns it off. If it's off, it turns it on. After detecting a press, it waits half a second to avoid bouncing. On to the main setup function. So we init our libraries and initialize our pins. Then we set the clock. This was the main issue I had with this controller. I forgot to add a battery, and I had no easy way to set the clock or adjust start times. So. Every time it resets, it sets the time to 12.01 a.m. If I want the lights on earlier, I just reset it a bit earlier. If you make one, I recommend having a battery and a dip switch to at least set the hour on reset. That way you can change it any time. And lastly, we have our loop. Check for button presses, run the check time routine to make any needed adjustments to the light levels, adjust the fans, then wait 50 milliseconds and do it all again. This system is very simple and basic. But it was also inexpensive and it's been humming along for five years with few issues. It's still in use, and the lessons learned will be used for the larger project. The one major issue was related to the buck driver for the 10 watt white LED. 
I was unable to locate the correct inductor, so I doubled up on some that were not rated for the current I was driving, and they eventually burned up. They work fine for the 600 milliamp current that the 3 watt LEDs needed, but an amp was too much. I ended up retrofitting a 1 amp constant current driver to replace that portion of the build. You can see it in the black electrical tape. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. I believe next we'll look at the digital temperature sensor build and the related code. Till then, thanks for watching.